Okay, so now we're going to convert uh, degrees, minutes, and seconds of latitude or longitude to uh, decimal degrees, which are more appropriate for inputting into computer programs, right? So if you look at the presentation, right, we are currently on slide two, and you'll see that in the black typeface there's, you know, 26 minutes, excuse me, 26 degrees, 22 minutes, 15.35 seconds north, and 80 degrees, 6 minutes, um, and 5.26 seconds of west longitude, right? So that longitude, 80 degrees, 6 minutes, 5.26 seconds, we're going to convert to decimal degrees. So if you go to the next slide, I've presented, I've presented two formulas uh, for converting degrees, minutes, and seconds uh, to decimal degrees. So if you take the number of degrees, right, and add it to the number of minutes, well, let me start over. If you take the seconds and you divide them by 60, that gives you, that converts those seconds into fractions of a minute, right? If you add that to the minutes and then divide the whole thing by seconds, that converts um, those minutes to a decimal fraction of degrees. And if you add that to the degrees, you end up with decimal degrees, right? Um, the second formula is mathematically equivalent. It's easier to calculate, but it's sort of less transparent in terms of what you're doing. I don't care which one you use, like on the quiz, for example, but whichever it is, try to get the right answer, right? Um, so if we go to the next, next slide, we can see the calculation, right? So we've got 80 degrees, 6 minutes, and 5.26 seconds of west longitude. Right? So if you take the seconds and divide them by 60, right, that gives you 0.08767. It's actually a continuous decimal, but you know, this is what you get. If you add that to the minutes, right, you get 6.08767, right? And then you divide that by 60, these minutes by 60 to convert them into, you know, decimal degrees, you get point one zero one four six one and you add that to your original degrees and the answer is eighty point one zero one four six one so what you're doing is you're converting the seconds to minutes and then the minutes to degrees and you add them all together and you get the decimal expansion uh, or extension instead of um, instead of minutes and seconds Try it for yourself. I may give you a homework problem. Let me know if you have any questions, okay? Another point that's important, right, is that um, there are various kinds of norths that we use in geography and in mapping, right? Um, most maps will show you uh, at, well, at least one north, right? Every map that you draw should show where north is. There should be an arrow pointing north. And you should specify which north it is. So both to make maps and to, um, to make maps and also to read maps properly, you need to know what kind of north they're talking about, right? So there's celestial north, which may be where the north star, Polaris, is, right? Um, there's geographic north, which um, points to the North Pole, right? There's also magnetic north, right? Um, obviously, we use compasses a great deal for orienteering and for mapping um, and 
for other purposes, right? So we use compasses, and of course, all a compass does is it points to magnetic north. And magnetic north varies from place to place depending on sort of the complex lines of the magnetic field of the Earth. The magnetic field of the Earth, we think, is created by the existence of a liquid metal core in the Earth, right? And of course, the Earth is spinning, so it acts as a dynamo, and that generates the Earth's magnetic field. The Earth's magnetic field is very important to us because it protects us from certain kinds of, you know, extraterrestrial or cosmic radiation and the solar wind and things like that, right? So it's great that we have a magnetic field, but it's it's not simple. It's the, the shape of the lines of force in the field are very complicated. And I'm going to show you a picture. If you go to the next slide, right, you can see this map of magnetic declination. Um, and you can see how complicated the lines of force are. They vary a great deal. And they change through time because, you know, the Earth is rotating. It's acting as a dynamo. It's generating. It's generating the magnetic field. And so it is a dynamical system with, you know, that changes over time, right? Um, so um, most maps, or at least professionally made government maps, um, you know, usually tell you what the magnetic declination is, which is to say the difference between true north and magnetic north. You know, the map will either state that in terms of the number of degrees or degrees minutes seconds um, or they may have two arrows one showing magnetic north and the other showing um, true north or grid north or something right celestial north so you need to be aware of this one of the difficulties that arises is if you're using older maps to for some of your data um, the mag and then you go out and do survey yourself with a compass, the magnetic declination will have changed over time. And um, fortunately, you can actually look this up. The National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration has a magnetic declination calculator where you can put in the latitude and longitude and the date, and it'll tell you what the declination is. So. You know, if you're looking at a map that doesn't have the declination marked from, you know, a map from 1952, because that's when the archaeological site was mapped and you need to know what the declination was then so you can, you know, match your map up to theirs or something like that, you can look up the declination using that. Um, I've had to do that for research projects that I've worked on. So, um, so whatever, you know, if you're making the map, Whatever, um, however you determine where north is on your map, north doesn't have to be at the top of the page, right? But whatever orientation you're using for your map, which could be some kind of grid north, you may establish your own grid, for example, that's parallel to the project area. If you have a long, narrow project area, it's going to make sense to have the map oriented so that the project area runs parallel to the long axis of your map, just so it's easier to represent on the paper. But you need to specify what that, what that angle or what that azimuth is, right? And how it relates to other norths, at least magnetic north. You know, at a minimum, you need to have magnetic north marked on your map with an arrow, okay?